when you have a SaaS client uh, that you want to connect uh, to a VI environment, uh, you have to perform some configuration steps before you can connect them. In a default deployment, uh, the SaaS Connect Spawner service is only reachable from internal clients. An example is a SaaS Studio session that can be an internal client uh, and it can uh, start a SaaS Connect server. But external clients need additional configuration to be able to reach the SaaS Connect Spawner from outside the cluster. You have to create a new load balancer or a node support service. As examples of external clients are SAS 9.4 sessions or a SAS Studio session running in a different SAS via cluster or an space. We will see now uh, how to perform the steps to, to open the connection. You have three main steps enable external access for SAS Connect. Then verify that the DNS name in the SAS Connect Spawner certificate is valid. And finally, ensure that the client trusts the TLS certificates presented by SAS VIA. Actually, we want to do additional steps. Before we even start, we want to verify that the internal functionality, the default SAS Connect functionality is working fine. And at the end, when everything is done, we can test a SAS Connect connection from an external SAS 9.4 client. So, Let's go and do it. The first thing we want to do is to check that the default SAS Connect configuration is fine and that we can start an internal connection. Here I have already logged in into SAS Studio and I have some sample code that I can submit and run on the client to see that it connects to a SAS Connect server. You can see it's running in the background. These lines of code from seven to nine are the ones that will actually execute on the remote session. And you can notice here we have the client session running on a SAS via compute server. And here is our remote session running on the connect on the same environment. So the internal environment is set up, everything is fine. Let's now start the configuration to open it to external connections. First of all, we want to check the existing environment. We already deployed VIA in the VIA org directory. Here we have our customization.yaml that we will need to modify. First, we follow the instructions. So we will copy some sample files from the examples folder into our site config folder. You see here in the site config of our deployment directory. Uh, in our configuration, we want to add the IP address of the existing via ingress load balancer to that file. So we will first find the uh, current uh, the IP address of the current load balancer. We can use, uh, for example, uh, this code. We can query uh, the uh, service for the ingress nginx controller. And in our environment, uh, we can see this is our IP address. So now I'll edit uh, the file. Just go to the end, add an additional line and paste the load balancer IP. This is a shortcut to reuse the existing load balancer and we can save it. Now the file is ready, so we can add a reference to it to our customization.yaml. It will go in the resources. Let's add a new line. There it is. And we have to obviously to make sure that the indentation is fine. Okay, save. And now we can apply the new configuration using whatever method we originally used to deploy SAS via. In uh, this environment, I used the SAS orchestration container, and so I will reuse the same simply to reapply it. Now it's just a matter of letting it run. In my environment, it will probably be a few minutes, so I will skip. And here we are, our deployment is successful. So we can now just verify and validate that the new external service has been created. So let's check it. There it is. We can see that we have the external IP and this corresponds to the one that we requested. At this point, our configuration is done. So we can move to the next step, which is to check the DNS name in the SAS Connect certificates. 
In the previous step, we added a new Kubernetes load balancer service to the existing external load balancer, and that has been already configured in the corporate DNS and probably the DNS alias was already specified in the SASVIA customization.yaml. This means that the certificates generated by SASVIA already included the DNS name associated to the external IP in the, in the certificates themselves. But if instead you had created a new load balancer or had used a different uh, DNS alias just for SASConnect, in that case, you would have had uh, to follow the additional steps described in the encryption in SASVIA data in motion guide to add uh, basically those DNS aliases to the certificates. Again, in our case, since we reused the same IP address of uh, the ingress, we just have to verify that everything is already configured. So first of all, Let's find the ingress DNS alias that was defined in customization.yaml during the initial deployment. There it is. In our environment, uh, the ingress host, uh, the alias to reach our dry environment is called via org.osk-ang-stud8.jellyenable.sas.com. And now if we check the certificate that is used by the sasconnet spawner, we have to see that the same name is there. And there it is. So we can recognize the name has already been uh, inserted in uh, the certificate. If you're curious about what we are doing here, first, uh, with this command, uh, we were looking for the name of the sasconnect spawner uh, secret. And then once we have the name, we can go and get the secret. And in the secret, we will look for the uh, TLS certificate, but the TLS certificate is stored in base64 encryption, so we have to decrypt it. Once it's been decrypted, we use the open TLS, sorry, open SSL command to provide, transform the certificate in a human readable format. And then we simply look for the subject alternate names that are in that certificate. So that's a brief explanation of what we are doing here. The end result, as I said, is uh, that we can see the DNS name that is in the certificate corresponds to the ingress host that was used initially in our BIO environment. So the second step has been done as well. Now we only have to perform the third configuration. And that is uh, uh, to uh, ensure that the client that we will use to connect to the BIO environment actually trusts those certificates uh, presented by every uh, via service, including the SASConnect service. In our environment, uh, we are using a self-signed uh, SAS via root certificate, uh, and this is unknown to the client external to the cluster, so they cannot be trusted. We have to obtain uh, the SAS via root certificate, import it in the win Windows Trust Store on the client, and then the client will trust the certificate. Uh, we will follow again the instructions from the official documentation, uh, the first step is to be performed by the SAS administrator. It, uh, the administrator has to retrieve the SAS certificate. So let's go and do it. With this command, we are getting uh, again the certificate. You can see here from the SAS via certificate secret in Kubernetes. Again, we are decrypting from base64. This time we don't have to use OpenSSL because we don't need to transform it into human readable format because we will give it to the Windows uh, machine. Let's have a look at the certificate just to be sure that we actually got it. There it is. This is our self-signed self certificate. At this point, the SAS administrator uh, has to give this file to the end users and the end users should import it in the Windows Certificate Store. Let's pretend that now we are the end user and we are now in, on our Windows client. We received the certificate via email and we saved it here on the Windows client. So now I need to import the certificate on Windows. How to do it is quite easy. One way is to, for example, double check it, double click it, sorry. We can check and it says that it is the SAS via OpenSSL root certificate, but it is not trusted. So, okay, I will install it. I want to be available on the machine. And this goes in the root certificates, in the trusted root certificates. Okay. Next, here just a confirmation. Done. The import was successful. Okay. Which means 
that now if I re double click again and to check it a second time, you can see that the certificate now it is recognized as valid, which means I can finally connect from my client. So let's open a SaaS, a SaaS client. There we are. And I have prepared the code to do an external sign on. Uh, now notice that now we are connecting to the full DNS name that we had have seen in the previous steps. But now the client is connecting to the load balancer, connecting to the SAS Connect Spawner and starting a remote server. And we can see that it worked here, SAS Connect Server, and we are done. In summary, what did we do? We first enabled the SASPNet Spawner to support external clients by opening the uh, load balancer service. Then we verified that the external host name was in the SAN definition in the SASPNet Spawner certificate. Then we had to obtain the SAS via root certificate and add it to the trust store on the external client. And at this point, we were able to run the external connection.